distributed. There'd be observations over here. So this is an extremely, extremely uh, leptokartotic distribution. And it's statistically significant because we got a whopping z value of 522.09, which is greater than 1.96. Uh, and it also, I would say, uh, based on even if you don't take statistical significance into perspective, because if you have a large sample size, you can fool yourself into thinking you have a statistically significant effect that's going to be problematic for your analysis. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at the other variable. Analyze descriptive frequencies. I'll take that one out, and I'm going to put subscale 2 in. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure statistics, kurtosis, yep. Now click OK. Now this is a larger sample size, 1,664, with a kurtosis value of 0.912. Now this seems small to me, especially considering what we had in the first variable. But if we divide it by the standard error of, of kurtosis, we're actually going to get a statistically significant effect. 0.912 divided by 0 0.120. What do we get? We get 7.6, and because that's larger than the demarcation criterion for statistical significance, the critical value, 1.96, we reject the null hypothesis of no kurtosis. Well, let's actually look at this distribution. It's not too bad. This is not a terribly uh, kurtotic distribution. There are, there are tails. Both sides have tails. It's not perfectly normal by any means. But I would not be fearful of applying a Pearson correlation, a t-test, an ELVA, a number of statistical analyses on this type of distributed data. And I wouldn't worry that I'd be inflating my type 1 error rate or that I would be violating any consequential assumptions. Uh, or I wouldn't be violating the assumption in a consequential way. So, yeah, you can estimate kurtosis and standard error of kurtosis in SPSS and other programs, and you can get the critical, you can get the obtained z value, which is which can be larger than 1.96, but you have to use some judgment. You have to look at your distributions and, and, and uh, examine for normality. And I have rules of thumb myself of if the skew isn't greater than the skew would have to be greater than 2, and kurtosis would have to be greater than 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, even in those ballparks. It's usually not too bad. In fact, I'm going to prepare another video about uh, what, when you have to be concerned about applying parametric analyses like t-test and ANOVA and correlations on data that look like they're not normally distributed, uh, but you really can still run the analysis on it anyway and not to be concerned. But at the very least, now you know how to estimate kurtosis and the standard error. Yes, you know how to test it for the, based on the z-test, uh, but you also know that it's a limited test because it's so sensitive to sample size. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.